getting ready for the next crash in six simple steps. That's today's show. Let's dive into it. Here we are at our very first rental property. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton Morris. Welcome to the Investing in Real Estate show. When you're done watching today's episode, you are gonna understand six great areas that you can prepare for the coming crash, because there's gonna be another one. So when you're done with today's episode, you'll be prepared, you'll be ahead of the game, you'll be smarter than the average investor out there. Welcome to the show. This is the show where we help you build financial freedom. And the vehicle that we use is buy and hold real estate. That's what we do. You can use whatever means necessary. You can go out and buy your own business, you can buy gold, I don't care. We use buy and hold real estate and the purpose is to create cash flow. Every month, our rental properties produce cash flow. So what happens when there's a housing crash or a market crash? People love to throw these terms around because you know it's something that the news can latch on to, the, the evening news and everyone gets in a panic about it. The way that I feel about housing bubbles, I'm sure I've made clear to you here on the show. If not, you can check out some of the other episodes where I've talked about what I think if there is a housing bubble. I believe that all bubbles are specific to certain markets. In fact, every street is different when you're buying real estate. Some streets might have more foreclosures than the street around the corner because there's more people who own properties free and clear around the corner, therefore fewer foreclosures. And then if you drive across town, there might be million dollar homes that just are having a major crash right now. And then you drive to downtown and it's better. So I don't believe there is a nationwide bubble for real estate. But when there are market corrections, there's an opportunity out there for us to buy. But there's also ways to protect ourselves. So let's dive into six ways that we can protect ourselves. Number one is to know your markets and to know your rents. Now, this is very important. How can you find this out? Well, property managers, and we always work with local property managers in our different markets and landlords are going to know the local market and the rents better than anyone. Okay, so you need to tap into property managers to get a sense of what's going on in the market. For instance, we know right now in one of our Michigan markets, we're seeing rents going up nicely. They're not skyrocketing, but they're going up nicely year after year. So on a tenant turnover, I know that I can raise my rent a little bit. That's great to know. How do I know that? Because the property manager told me that information, right? They're keeping their eye to what's happening in these local neighborhoods. Now, you might say, well, wouldn't an appraiser know that? Or wouldn't a bank know that? No. And here's the thing. Here's, what, here's a secret that investors know that other people don't know is that appraisers and banks are a day late and a dollar short. Now, I'm not insulting any appraisers out there. They're simply working with old data. When an appraiser goes in to get a sense of what's happening in the neighborhood, they're not looking at the number of homes that are frankly lived in by retail buyers who are living there free and clear. They're not also looking at stability of the job market, stability of jobs in that area. They're simply looking at the house and they're looking at old data to make their assessment. So what I want to do is get a sense of prognostication, right? I want to see what's going to happen a bit in the future. And by looking at rents going up, that's something that you're not going to get from an appraiser. You're also not going to get that from a bank because a bank is also living in the past when it comes to data. Now, this is an opportunity for you as an investor, because if there are other people out there, newbie investors who are using appraisers and that's the only thing they're relying on, then that's an opportunity for you to jump in and grab a property. That happened to me recently. Um, I was about to, I wanted to make an offer on this particular property. I actually knew that someone else, someone else was in the process of making an offer on the property, but was a new investor, didn't really know what they were doing, and they were going and hiring an appraisal and I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I already know that this is a great property. I know this area. I'm gonna jump in and take this. I'm not waiting for this person to make an appraisal uh, and make their, make their offer. I'm gonna jump in right now. And that's what sealed the deal for me. As a seasoned investor, I'm able to jump into that. So again, appraisers using old data, frankly. In fact, they might be even using months old data. And a lot can happen in a few months in a particular neighborhood. So be aware of that. The second way that you can prepare yourself for an upcoming market crash or collapse in the housing market is to own properties free and clear. 
What got people into trouble in 2007, 2008? Right, being over leveraged, okay? So if you can own properties free and clear, then you can be in the clear. Now, you might see a dip in the value of your $60,000 house. It might drop down in to $50,000 in value during, a, during some sort of a correction. Who cares? You own it free and clear and you're not carrying a mortgage on that property. And you're also keeping it rented with market rent in good neighborhoods like we've taught you to buy, right? So having those properties owned free and clear and not having a debt service on them can really be powerful during a downturn. The number three way to protect yourself during a market crash is to not be over leveraged. So this goes with point number two, right? Uh, to buy properties free and clear anytime you can. To have that cash flow unfettered is beautiful. But our third point is about not being over leveraged. So here's the mistake that, that investors make all the time. They buy property and they're over, they, they buy it and they don't have proper cash flow on that property. They pay too much for a property. You know my rule, right? Which is to not buy single family homes more than $150,000. Don't spend more than $150,000 on a single family home. Most of the homes I buy are in that 60, 70, $80,000 range, okay? I do not wanna buy properties more than $150,000 because the rent will not keep up with the value of the house beyond that point. Very important point. So if you buy a $300,000 single family home that you think is a great investment, I got news for you. That mortgage that you're paying $3,000 a month on, you're not gonna get $3,000 in rent. Maybe you will if you're lucky, but then when there's a market correction, guess what's gonna to happen to that rent? That's gonna plummet, okay? The, that, that's gonna plummet down to about $1,800 a month. I've seen it happen, and it will happen on a property of that cost. Now, you're carrying a mortgage for $3,000 a month, and now your tenant's only paying $1,800 a month. Guess who's underwater there? You are, so don't make that mistake. Rather, be in areas where your rent is going to be above that value. So in a $60,000 home, it might rent for $750, $800, $900 a month. That's a great deal, right? Because now you're probably either owning it free and clear or the leverage you have on that particular property is gonna be very, very low for a $60,000, $65,000 house. So again, don't over leverage yourself. That's how people got in big trouble during the last collapse. Number four way to protect yourself during a downturn is simply to have some cash in the bank. Now, this isn't like a Dave Ramsey approach where you're gonna have six months of, of savings just in case you know something happens. I don't agree with that strategy at all, N necessarily. We don't need to get into all the details now. You know I've railed against that before. But what I'm saying is to have money in case you wanna find some deals. Have enough money sitting there that you can go out and pounce on some great deals that may arise. That's what's gonna happen in a downturn. There are going to be deals that are gonna pop up. There may be foreclosures, short sales, other areas where there's going to be distress that'll enable you to swoop in and make a purchase on a property because you've got some cash in the bank. You know, dumb investors have nothing, right? They have nothing left and they're fully leveraged. They have zero savings and they're totally maxed out. You want to have some money in the bank that you can pounce on some good deals when a correction occurs. My fifth strategy for helping you stay correct during a market correction is to make sure that you're renting to tenants with diversified jobs. So I look at my portfolio of properties Every tenant in my property is different, okay? This is why I talk about renting in areas where you have a diverse labor force. The areas that my company, we love to buy properties and rehab for our clients, and I personally buy many, many of them, is in areas where we've got all sorts of different jobs. Remember, I never wanna be in a one horse town. I don't wanna be in the one place in the one town where there's an oil refinery. That's the only job available. And I've, I'm renting to 20 people that work at the oil refinery. And then suddenly the oil refinery goes out of business. Guess what's gonna happen? Yep, you're about to have 20 people that live in your home, uh, in your apartment complex that are without a job. And you are up a river without a paddle, as they say. So make sure that you're, you're, make sure you're renting to people that have diverse jobs. So I can name 
I've got postal employees that rent from me. Uh, I've got a principal in a school that rents from me. Uh, I've got someone that works at a Walmart, a, a manager of a Walmart that, that rents from me. I've got a diverse range, right? I've got people that work at Amazon that rent from me, people that work at FedEx that, that rent from me. So different jobs offer security in a downturn. So if FedEx would, were to go out of business, imagine that, right? Imagine FedEx going out of business. Well, guess what? That's one or two of my uh, my tenants that work for them. But the local hospital is not going out of business and the nurse that works at the hospital still has a job. So diversity in your tenant job placement. And number six on my list of ways to protect yourself during a market correction, get used to it. It's going to happen. And you can't get scared about it. You can't be upset about it. It is part of the cycle. When you invest in real estate, if you are out there in the field playing and actually making money and building wealth, this is going to happen. You have to get used to it. Now, if you don't want to be a part of it, you don't want to be in the arena and a 401k is fine for you, right? And your W-2 job is fine for you and a minimal return in the stock market is fine for you, then great. Just wait till the cycle happens and you lose money in your 401k in the stock market, right? It's going to happen. It's cycles exist. John Schaub in his great book, Building Wealth in a Changing Market, he's a great real estate investor. He says this, I'm gonna quote, successful investors not only adapt to change, they exploit it. While the majority sit on the sidelines wringing their hands, successful investors are looking for and buying opportunities created by the change. Change is gonna happen. It's an opportunity. If you've got some of that cash on hand, you can pounce on some of those deals. And if you've followed the other five steps that I laid out here today, you'll be in a good place going forward so that even during a market correction, you're going to have consistent rent, you're going to have free and clear properties, and you're going to have consistent cash flow flowing in all in an effort to create financial freedom for you and your family. If you haven't already downloaded my, downloaded my freedom cheat sheet, it's simple. Just download it. It's right here. You can download it. And it's three pages, totally free. It'll help you and your family figure out your monthly expenses and then how to reverse engineer it from there. How many rental properties would it take for you to be financially free? Download it today. And thank you so much for subscribing to the show. I really appreciate it. Now, it's my deepest goal for you to go out there and take action, become a real estate investor. I believe it's the number one way to build wealth. We'll see you next time, everyone.